there are a few things um, that I wanted to go over about the law just because I get so many questions about the law and um, it really obviously is kind of a focal point of, um, of the whole Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, it's really just the, the foundation of it all when you're reading through the Bible. Um, and it seems like everything relates to it. Uh, so obviously I can understand the questions. So um, I, th I guess this lesson or this, this video is kind of more about applying the Old Testament law, I guess. Um, so first things was something that came up in a discussion the other day that I was doing. Um, when Paul talks about being free from the law, he's talking about the law of Genesis and Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that law. He's not talking about being free of the law of the land, okay? Because the, following the law of the land doesn't save us, okay? Now, now of course, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, that doesn't save us either. But, I mean, those things have to do with God's law, whereas the law of the land has to do with man's law. So Paul's talking about two different things there, okay? Paul is talking about the Bible, not um, an excuse to not obey the law of the land. So, um, so when you're reading the Old Testament law, the books of the law, some things... When you're reading it, you can't immediately go to the conclusion of this does not apply to me today. But um, other things, so I guess what I'm saying is it's not instantly not followed. Okay, You, you read it through and you kind of have to do a little bit of legwork. First off, you look at the problem, you look at the situation, you look at the passage, and then you say, okay, now... What did this mean to them back then? Okay, then you say, okay, what what's changed and what's still the same between now and then? And then you say, okay, what does the New Testament have to say about this? And then you say, okay, so what's the principle that stays the same past that? Okay, I'll give you some examples. Um, so first off, um, the uh, the sacrifices. Well, so we get to the sacrifices and we see, okay, well, um, because they sinned against God. Um, God's wrath had to be justified, and he temporarily allowed animals to die in the place of the people. Um, okay? Um, but then, when Jesus came, he became our kinsman redeemer, and died in our place, okay? And because of that, we never have to sacrifice another animal, and it, when we trust in God, the blood of Christ, uh, Christ covers us. So then we get to the priests, and we s can still draw principles from the, the priests and from the sacrifices and whatnot, but we know that we don't have to follow that anymore. Um, we don't have to have a priest that goes into the holy place for us anymore wearing certain clothes and all that stuff. We don't have to have that anymore. Rather, we seek after the Lord, and Jesus Christ is our great high priest who is always interceding for us before the Father. If that makes sense, Okay. Um, so then we get to things about the tabernacle or the temple. Well, we know now that people worship in spirit and truth, and it's not about a place anymore. So we don't have to go to Jerusalem. We don't have to rebuild a temple or a tabernacle or any of that kind of stuff. See what I mean? You, you take it from back then. Okay, so the children of Israel had to use utilize a tabernacle, then later a temple, um, to, to have a place to worship God because um, God was God is holy. So he can't dwell among sinful people. But once again, with the with the um, with Jesus being given, that's not really a factor anymore because it's His holiness that carries over. Um, so then people always ask, so why do we even have to follow the law? Well, Paul talks about this in Romans and Galatians, and I've already kind of talked about it before. But when we're truly saved, works follow. Does that, does that make sense? We're not perfect. We still mess up. But as we seek after the Lord, he changes us, and our desires change too. But not, not only that, but just because you're saved doesn't give you the excuse of, of sinning when you know it's wrong. You're actually going against the Holy Spirit's conviction on your heart. So, um, but then we get to some places like the moral living, things that have to do with, with morality, and we 
there's not that big of a separation. You know what I mean? There's not you don't have to think that hard when when you're trying to understand how it applies to you today. Like you get to the Ten Commandments and it says, "Do not steal." And you don't have to do a whole lot of legwork. That's something that you still shouldn't do nowadays. Even though you're under the under grace, that doesn't give you an excuse to sin. See, people get very confused. The Old Testament law, do you have to follow it? No. We are free from that law now. So does that mean I can do things that the law didn't even allow just because I'm under grace? How do you figure? See, I mean, it doesn't. It, just because we're under grace doesn't give us an excuse to do those things. Um, like I'll give you a few examples. I'm um, sleeping with an animal. That was strictly forbidden in the Old Testament law. However, it still is sin, and sin is still in existence. And just because you don't have to follow the law doesn't mean you shouldn't do the thing. Do the doesn't mean you shouldn't live God's way. If that makes sense. Um, to put it another way, you could say that we're free from the sacrifices and the priesthood, but that we're still. Um, we still have to live God's ways. That makes sense. Um, and also, don't forget I mentioned this, the law is now on our hearts. And some parts of the Bible are going to be easier to understand than other parts. Some parts of the law are just going to be real simple. You get to the Ten Commandments and it says, do not steal. Okay, that one is pretty easy to apply to nowadays. Don't steal. Okay. But then you get to some parts, like Leviticus chapter 12, and it talks about um, a woman who's who gives birth and all these different things and all the, all the different things. And it's just like, okay, whoa, how does this apply to me today? See what I mean? Um, so some parts are going to be easier. Some parts are going to be not so easy. Um, but when you're doing that and when you're, when you're trying to apply the Bible, what you do is you get principles um, that uh, relate. For, for instance, in Deuteronomy, it talks about um, not going after fortune tellers. Well, and, and, and on horoscopes and that kind of stuff. And, and so then that brings the question of, oh, does that still apply to us today? Well, yeah, it does, because fortune telling is still witchcraft. See what I mean? Just because we're under the law of grace doesn't mean that we're, we're able to now worship other gods. See what I mean? And rather, it's the people who claim to be of God and then don't live any different that prove by their actions that they are not really saved. See, because someone, when they're truly saved, um, as they grow, this happens over the period of, of months, years, etc., they start to feel conviction towards doing wrong things that displease God. And so the Holy Spirit is itself a guide for them. See what I mean? So they, they know what's right and wrong. Um, and, and our conscience obviously testifies as well, you know, hey, this is wrong. You know, especially um, as we're saved, you know, that God kind of revives that. Um, <clears throat> but once again, like we get to 1 Corinthians and Paul talks about um, how they were free to eat the meat that was sacrificed, but that they shouldn't do it for the sake of their brother. But then he says, um, why should I stumble for, um, uh, or... Why should I withhold because of my brother's um, inability? And he, you know, goes on about um, uh, doing things for doing things for God's glory and whatnot. Um, but so another example would be um, about paying tithes. Does is that something that's instantly negated or undone because of Jesus? Well, and the answer is 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 no. Uh, we do still pay tithes today. Because just because it was in the Old Testament law doesn't mean that it shouldn't be followed now. The tithe was given in the law for two reasons. Um, two main reasons, I should say. Um, first was to teach the fear of the Lord. Second, or to honor God, to put him first, to always seek after him and everything, to have your, your financial world or your, or your, um, your well-being revolve around God. And the second reason uh, was because of... Um, to provide for God's servants. Now, both of those things are still necessary. See what I mean? We should still put God at the center of our lives. We should still worship and seek him first. And our financial well-being and everything of our well-being should always revolve around God. Does God find your purchases pleasing? Does God find your lifestyle pleasing? See what I mean? And then we should also provide for, for, for God's servants. See what I mean? So those things haven't really done away with just because Jesus came. That's something that still carries through. 
God still has servants that need to be provided for, and God's people still need to seek him with a whole heart. Both of those things still apply. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, okay, so then that takes us to... Um, I want to look up an example here. And this example is from the prophet Malachi chapter 3, which is usually one of the key passages that is quoted for um, um, tithes, people who support giving tithes. Let me click out of this. There. Um, and uh, this is what it says, in, starting in verse 8. Will man rob God, yet you are robbing me? But you say, How have we robbed you in your tithes and contributions? You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Excuse me. That there may be um, food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for your blessing until there is no more need. Um, so the first thing to realize is that this was written, this was a prophet that was sent to Israel. Now, if you read through the books of the law, God made it very clear, if you follow, if you do this, I will do this. Well, see, what happened was Israel was not fulfilling their part of what God told them to do, so he had removed, removed blessings. And so then they were asking God, why is this happening? How have we robbed you in this? And, and God was saying, I told you to do this, and you're not doing this, so I removed my blessings on this. We're not talking about an issue necessary of salvation. We're talking about God gave them a, a command as they went into the promised land, and they failed to follow that command. Um, part of that command was the tithes and offering. See, they were trying to give a half-hearted service to God. Um, and so as a result, God removed their blessings. So what what's the same from now and then? Well, we're still God's people, and we still need to put him first, not just with finances, with everything in our lives. So... Um, but, once again, we were not given a promised land on earth, and we were not given a, a conditional covenant that says, if we do this, you would do this. In other words, we should still put God first, and we should still provide uh, for God's servants. Um, however, we cannot necessarily claim that God's going to increase our finances, for instance, because, see what I mean? That was a, a promise that God gave to Israel for that time. See what I mean? Um, I know a lot of people who pay tithes, who will never get, um, they'll never be rich. They'll always be scraping the bottom of the barrel. See what I mean? And, and just because, just because um, um, you're paying tithes doesn't mean that all of a sudden God's going to bless you upon blessings. No, because we're not under the law anymore. Um, however, it is still a good idea um, to provide for God's servants and to um, seek God with, with, with your whole heart. Um, you know, we as a church share a building. And so it's kind of everybody's responsibility to provide for the building so that we can all continue to meet together in the building. See what I mean? Um, and then as far as God's servants, well, they still need, they still need um, to be provided for. Um, so I hope that kind of explains that. Um, and that's kind of what you got to do. You, you read the passage, you kind of see what's different and what's stayed the same, and then you apply it to today. You don't instantly read a passage of the Old Testament and say, okay, I'm instantly writing that off. And never never do that. Um, let me see if I can find another spot. Um, let's just um, see if we can do it here. Um, uh, Deuteronomy chapter... Um, let's do chapter 11. You shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, and his commandments always. And consider today, since I am not speaking to your children who have not known or seen it, consider the discipline of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his outstretched arm, his signs and his deeds that he did in Egypt to Pharaoh the king of Egypt and to all his land, and what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord has destroyed them to this day, and what he did to you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to death and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the sons of Reuben, how the earth opened his mouth and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that followed them in the midst of all Israel. For your eyes have seen all the great work um, of the Lord that he did. See what I mean? Um, so, okay, let's let's see how does this, how, what's different. Well, we were not ta personally taken out from Egypt, um, and uh, we are not um, Israel. We are, but we are still God's believers. So, what's 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 the What's the what's stayed the same? Um, God has still res rescued us from um, from sin, so uh, 
God ha um, we should still keep in mind the things that God has done both for us and, and for the people who came before us. Um, we should still seek God with a whole heart. Um, we should still um, uh, remember his mighty deeds. We should still follow his ways rather than uh, seek after him and live his way rather than living however the heck we want. See what I mean? So that one wasn't that that difficult, uh, and, and as you read the read the books a little lot, you'll kind of get a hang get a hang of it. Some parts will be a little bit difficult, but you just keep reading. You go back and you keep studying. You go back and keep studying. Keep studying. You keep reading it, and and you don't stop just because it's a little confusing. You you keep reading. You keep studying. Go to maybe a different part and come back to it later. Do whatever you need to do. Just study the word, and God has a way of revealing things as as we seek after Him. It may take years, but if you're diligent in your studies, God will God will God will reveal things to you as you read His Word. Um, so an application from this would be then be um, always seek the Lord and put Him at the center of your life. And as a motivation for this, remember all the things all the things that He's done for you, all the way He's carried you throughout your whole life. He's he's preserved your life even now, and sure it might not be the life that that you thought you wanted or, or that you needed or whatever, but that's just an attitude of ungratefulness. Rather focus on the things that God has done, and, and see what I mean. Focus on seeking Him with your whole heart, making His way, um, making His way your way. Focus on God's kingdom. Lord, teach me to learn at Your feet. That's an application from this passage. See what I mean? Um, and and you just kind of get a hang of it. You read the Old Testament. You see what's different, what has stayed the same. Does the New Testament co comment on it one way or another? And then you and then you can get a principle from all that, the underlying principle, like I just did with that, where, okay, we seek God with the whole heart. That's an underlying principle from that passage. And then you draw an application. When you're going through difficult times, remember what the Lord has done for you in the past. See what I mean? Um, and I hope that that kind of clarifies because um, a lot of people have a hard time with the law. I mean, just a really hard time with the law. Um, and uh, but just remember that we don't have, we don't, um, we don't follow the law uh, in the same way that that they did back then. Um, and if there's any questions about the law, be sure and post it, post it in the uh, in the comments below, and I'll and I'll do my best to get back to it. Um, so uh, as far as ties. Um, there's no reason why we should assume that we shouldn't pay tithes anymore. Okay, it was the uh, elders of Israel paid. I mean, um, Israel's forefathers gave tithes to God before um, the law was given. The law said that said that um, you should also give tithes. Um, there's no reason to assume why the practice should stop. Now, especially when Paul writes in and uh, writes Timothy that. Um, the workman is worthy of his wages. So um, how much more should we say no, I and mean, should we not say no, I, I don't, I shouldn't be providing for God's servants. Just because you're under God's grace doesn't mean, that that, that means for you that you should not um, honor God with your money. See, it just doesn't really follow. Um, but then we get to places like, like the sacrifices. Well, how do we know we don't have to do the sacrifices anymore? Because we're not under the covenant, Jesus died in a place, and just in case we missed it, the book of Hebrews goes to great lengths to show us that. Same thing for the priesthood. And yes, we all are priests in the sense of we all seek after the Lord, and we all um, um, put him first in our lives and that kind of stuff, but that doesn't mean that we have some special um, entrance into heaven or some nonsense like that, you know what I mean? We're God's people, and uh, it's God's it's the blood of Christ that, that, uh, that covers over us. Um, so what about some of the parts of the law like um, do not do sorcery practices, don't don't uh, don't go to fortune tellers? Well, nothing in the New Testament says that we shouldn't do that, and that's not part of um, that's not a part of the law that um, you see what I mean. That that's something that almost directly still applies. You still shouldn't seek other gods. You still shouldn't um, shouldn't follow the the immoral practices of the nations around you. First Corinthians talks about this a lot. Um, what about uh, sleeping with animals? Can we sleep with animals? Well, no, because God intended for sex to be between a husband and a wife, not between anything else. Anything else. Um, um, 
So okay. Um, do you do you still have to? Um, well, okay. I think I've kind of made my made my point. Uh, just really, when it all comes down to it, just keep studying, keep reading the law, just keep reading the Bible, keep seeking after the Lord, and and, and join that with prayer. And God has a way of 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 uh, of just helping you to see things that you couldn't see before.